My youngest brother was only three and didn't go to school. And my oldest brother was sent to Japan to take care of my grandmother. And mama was busy being a farmer's wife with a house full of children. Mitsuko Kawamoto is at the La Mesa Community Library, and like the books on the shelves, she has a story to tell. All of us lived in a two-bedroom white clapboard house with electricity but no running water. Her story began decades ago, but only recently has she begun to describe her family's life in the 1940s. I guess you could say we were poor, but we lived comfortably and never went hungry. She had three brothers and three sisters and traditional Japanese parents. Japanese parents don't tell their children a lot of things. They just tell them what to do, tell them where to go, you know, so we didn't ask a lot of questions. But there was one thing that her parents could not hide from the family. Into this peaceful life, an emotional bomb dropped into our lives, an event that would change our lives forever. Pearl Harbor. The event that catapulted the United States into a world war only magnified the trust Mitsuko had in her parents. They didn't tell me anything, just that we were leaving. And you know, I was satisfied uh, because they were my parents and I go anywhere with them as long as they were there. But she was only satisfied as only a seven-year-old could be. I was too young to understand what happened. All I knew is we had to move from our home. The only reason I was upset was that I had to give up this playhouse that my uh, dad had built for me from a big cardboard box that the new refrigerator came in. On February 19, 1942, President Roosevelt signed Executive Order 9066, authorizing the Secretary of War to prescribe certain areas of the United States as military zones. This order eventually led to the relocation of Japanese Americans to internment camps. All the Japanese in San Diego were ordered to leave on April 8th. What was our crime? People in the government said, we may be traitors. We look like the enemy. A case of the measles for Mitsuko and her younger brother postponed their family's exit from San Diego that day. Two weeks later, we left San Diego in an olive green army truck with a canvas top. We were only allowed to take one suitcase per person. Everything else was left behind or sold. Their first stop was the Santa Anita racetrack. Because we arrived later, tar paper barracks had been built and that became our home for the next four months. We were the lucky ones. After spending time there, they were on to their final destination. After four months, we would be transferred to another camp. We'd be tra uh, traveling by train. Boy, was I excited, I'd never been on a train before. It was post in Camp 3, one of the 10 major relocation centers. The ride was hot, windy, dusty. When we got off the bus, it was hot, dusty, and windy. But like most kids, Mitsuko made the most of her situation. We did things to keep ourselves busy, and we didn't have to have a lot of expensive toys. We had no, not even a ball to play with. And uh, no skates, no bicycles, nothing like that. But we made do with what was available, and we had fun. The meager home they were whisked away from in Chula Vista was many steps above what they were given as living quarters in Arizona. Each family was assigned a barracks apartment, unfurnished except for cots and one bare light bulb in the middle of the apartment. No mattresses, so straw had to be stuffed into large bags. But later, real mattresses and iron cots were given to us. My oldest brother, Nissan, made a small desk for me. Blankets were hung to divide the apartment. The camp was organized into blocks. In many respects, life as a whole had changed for Mitsuko and her family, but that didn't mean they were totally abandoned. In camp, school was provided for all the children through high school. A library was provided for use, and I discovered the wonderful world of books. Mitsuko now understands what those years meant in Arizona, and doesn't shy away from sharing her experience. Well, I enjoy it just because uh, it's uh, telling people what happened. Experiences from a person who'd been there, lived that. And she hopes what happened then will be a constant reminder for everyone. It shouldn't ever happen again to intern people with no laws, no evidence committing them of any, committing of any crime. But when I thought back about it as an adult, 
then I was really upset for my parents. I could uh, understand what they must have been going through.